it's coming. Isn't it going to be great the day we can see yeah. more than that? Yeah. Oh, if you want to, I can move the devices here and then I'll turn the camera It's going to be more than that. I'm all that secrets on the right. Yeah, we have to hold it. so glad that we were able to schedule this and have this. I know it's been a long time, but it's grateful, uh, I'm grateful that we can be here together today. Uh, before we begin, are there any announcements from the family or anything that anyone needed to know? You're all family, but yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody got all the information? Okay. At the conclusion of the service here, uh, we will then immediately go out to our vehicles and then the funeral director will lead us over to the Bellevue Cemetery uh, where we will have the conclusion of our service with the burial and then I believe the plan is to come back here to the community center uh, immediately following. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us begin. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the source of all mercy, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Alice Betty. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life 
that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn. My mom's mom 
my grandma Alice. My cigarette smoking, blue jean wearing, <laughs> trailer living, factory working, unvery, un, un grandma ish like grandma. She wasn't the type to bake me cookies or sew me dresses. She didn't really cook much either. She was more of a Campbell soup type grandma or an egg salad sandwich type grandma. One of my favorite memories is when we'd um, throw an old ratty quilt on the floor and we'd enjoy an egg salad sandwich picnic, as she'd call it. It wasn't picnic, it was picnic. <laughs> Uh, when my brother and I would visit, and we would visit her a lot, um, she'd take us to the local Pomida store, and we would get to pick out a little treat or some kind of trinket. And one time, I picked out this little book as my treasure to take back to her place. And um, to this day, I still have that copy of Mr. Pine's Purple House. <laughs> They're laughing because I've read it to my kids so many times we haven't committed to memory. So, very, very special memory. Um, Grandma may not have been super sophisticated, but she loved to read. Um, she always had a copy of a novel nearby or um, assorted crossword puzzle books. And I was always really amazed at all of the words that she knew when we would do crossword puzzles. She knew so many just obscure words. And um, I just really thought she was a smart lady. And so I equated being smart with being a reader. And so I thought that was a really great lesson that she taught. So Grandma's life, it was truly a bed of roses, except I think she kind of got the thorns. You know, she faced rejection and she faced cruelty from those who were supposed to provide protection and unconditional love to her. And, sometimes, and she struggled with addiction, and I think she struggled with some guilt. And I think those demons probably followed her her whole life. But I didn't really see those things when I looked at her. I saw someone who gave up drinking when I was born. So. That was a condition to be a part of my life, and I thought that was pretty awesome. I saw someone who had determination, and she um, flexed that strength again when she quit smoking cold turkey. I was in elementary school when she did that, and I thought that was really amazing. Um, another favorite memory of her is she was a super compassionate listener. And throughout the years, she would sit on her couch with me for hours, listening to me as I just poured out my little tender, tender adolescent heart. Um, we talked about boy troubles and friend troubles and parent troubles. And she just treated those problems like they were serious and legitimate concerns. And she never belittled my feelings. And I thought that was an amazing gift as she gave to me. So, you know, as, as I've been thinking about today, there were a lot of things that I wished I could have given Grandma. I wish I would have maybe given more visits or, or calls or letters. And I know through the years I did pray that she would have a sense of peace um, just to calm the nagging guilt I think that she felt. But the one thing that I really hope that I gave her um, was just the knowledge that she was really the coolest grandma. And um, she helped shape me. And I know that my kids have been shaped because of the time that they spent with her and just um, the things that she taught me. And so I really think that she has helped create a beautiful and positive and lasting legacy. And I think the world is better because she was my grandma. And I am proud to say that I have a little bit of Graham Allison. <laughs> that was really good. Um, concerning uh, my mom's uh, hardships, she was a, 
Her father passed away when she was seven months old. Um, had TB, brought it home with him from uh, service in the military during uh, World War I. Uh, anyway, uh, the social stigma was that was overwhelming as well. Um, uh, had a lot of, what you were saying, uh, Jennifer, there was a lot of uh, uh, social stigma with that, and uh, it ended up, uh, it was a contagious, deadly disease. And even family members, extended family, had nothing to do with her family. And she went through her life without having much to do, or anything to do with her whole side of the family. It's like it was over. So uh, anyway, um, being rejected like that, and that's kind of what you were saying, Jennifer. It was just, I can't even imagine. Um, I don't think I ever met anyone that had a more adverse experience in life. As a young person, um, things did clear up for her though on October 14, 1969, and since then she had a lot better time of life. Uh, she taught me that no one is any better than me, and that I'm no better than anyone else. We're all pretty much the same, and that led to the unconditional acceptance that I teach uh, as a sweat recovery facilitator. She was in the books I read. In a roundabout way, she taught me to read books too. And you can, uh, if you can't read, if you're not reading books, you might show up kind of uh, like you might not uh, be too smart. And that was kind of what uh, I learned. And I learned a lot about reading. And I read, I've read thousands of books, and it saved my life. It's added to my life, added to the value of my children's lives, added to the value of a lot of people that I've touched. Um, so it's a cornerstone of uh, this acceptance of self. Uh, turned out to be a real cornerstone of my own mental uh, health and my mental surviving, what I've survived. So anyway, um, she lived life with no fear. And uh, her only fear was for her children's best interests that I ever saw. Um, and she moved around the country a lot. And I can't even imagine what, how she would do that just packed up and moved. And she didn't pack everything, because it didn't matter. <laughs> you know, that didn't fit, it didn't fit. You know, how big's a U-Haul? Well, that ain't going. And a lot didn't go, and it was okay. Because um, <laughs> that's just how it was. Uh, so she taught me to have no fear at an early age, too. And that's been a value, added so much value in my life. And I've had a wonderful life by living life with no fear. And I, well, and I spent a lot of time thinking, uh, uh, in different situations, what would my mother do? Or what would my grandmother do here, you know, and her mom? So I just gained so much in my personal life from uh, my mother. And uh, uh, anyhow, uh, rather than being angry at the world, she tried to understand the world and the people. Uh, for example, she said to me, uh, people aren't bad. They're just stupid. And, and real one. They're just stupid. They can't help it, you know? They just can't help themselves. So you gotta cut them some slack, basically, you know? And just, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and it was my early lesson concerning people not being their behavior, you know? And uh, that stuff resonates later in life. Uh, just lessons learned. Um, and you can help people because they it needs, uh, need help so much, is what she said. She taught me that lessons in life uh, come from experiencing great personal adversity and how emotional pain really hurts. Uh, so you be nice to everyone. And she was. Um, she enjoyed a variety of music. Most of the music of the 60s, and she liked the country music a lot, but she was in a lot of old rock and roll stuff too. She even listened to Pink Floyd, and uh, I mean, who would have thought? And I, I had an album, Erica bought me an album for Christmas one year, it was The Wall Flowers, and I asked, and we were listening to it, uh, and I asked my, I asked mom, uh, I said, her, his dad's a famous singer, uh, who do you think that is singing? And she listened for just a couple seconds, and she said, ah, it's, uh, it must be Bob's di Bob Dylan's kid. He's singing through his nose just like his dad. <laughs> and, uh, how are you ever going to forget something like that? That's cool stuff, you know? Um, and here I mentioned, uh, I got to the part here where uh, 
I, she read all the time, and it was the cool thing to do. And uh, because of that is what led me to read so much and, and add a lot of value in my life and, and catch up to uh, where I needed to be. And uh, I learned to read, and uh, I read a lot of the positive mental attitude books, and that really helped me too, and it saved my life from where I was. Based on my behavior, things weren't looking that good. <laughs> and uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, anyhow, uh, and I know that uh, we were lucky when she moved up to our place, um, she stayed with us, and she was at home with our kids and Julie and I could go to work and not worry about, about the house. And uh, three daughters needed uh, grandma there. And she was there with them. And one thing I know she taught them was that uh, the, the girls loved their grandma. And she taught them that they no, don't need a guy to create <laughs> happiness in their life. Okay? And, uh, and you're looking for a partner in life is what she told, them, what she told the kids. And, uh, and that's what to look for. Uh, another thing, uh, 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 my brother and I, we would tell her that we're running away from home, okay? We we're just little kids. And she'd go to work, she'd pack us up at lunch, and we would have uh, brown sugar sandwiches on Wonder Bread, okay, and some cookies. And then she would uh, 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 pour milk in the, mason, the jars, the old jars, and she'd wrap them in... Uh, um, she wrapped the jars in newspaper just to keep them, uh, keep them chilly. And she watched my brother and I walk about a, a little over a half a mile, and we'd be at the creek. And then she, when we left the road, she knew there are very often sandwiches right now, and she'd give us some time. And by the time we were done having lunch, she was there to pick us up. And we didn't have to talk about why we run away from home. It was all everything was good. So it was really, really cool. Um, Anyhow, uh, one more thing. I uh, uh, my first visit after the quarantine was done down there in Springfield. Patrick and I rode motorcycles down there, and uh, uh, Karen had told me to be bringing up uh, the past stuff that were fun. And the thing I, I brought up with her there, one of them was uh, I asked her what what it was like to uh, drive into Bellevue. 65 years ago in a brand new 1956 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. That was turquoise, the light top, and it had all the options. It was quite the car. And it was brand new. So the poorest kid in town, a few years later, is driving into town in a brand new Cadillac. Um, big uh, grin. And she said, it was really fun, she said. <laughs> really fun. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what a deal. Um, uh, let's see, uh, she uh, taught us integrity. You have to have integrity as a human. And she, she taught that to us as well. A lot of lessons. Um, and you don't steal and you don't lie. And you work for a living. And you do your best efforts. Uh, one day, uh, a fellow was over to my house who was really struggling. He had a hard time giving up the alcohol. And I knew what his background was somewhat. He explained that. And uh, I thought he had a pretty good time with it, you know? And he says to me, when I said to him about, you got to stop the drinking. And he says, yeah, but you just don't know how tough I've had it. And my mom had just taken a drink of coffee, and I don't know if it came out or no, but she was laughing. <laughs> and that really limited what he said, but you just don't know how tough I got. She just cracked up. <laughs> and and uh, she didn't even say, I'm sorry. She just got up and walked away laughing. <laughs> Good one, you know? Well, uh, I don't know what ever happened. Though. He did not appreciate. Uh, being challenged on his hardships, I guess. So, there you have it. Um, what else did I... Uh, there's so much about my mom that was uh, just incredible. Uh, and if you meet her, you wouldn't have known all the in-depth details in her life. Um,
sorry to talk. It is. Yes. Yes. Um, Just the greatest it. blessing I have is her being my mom. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Thank, of the prophet Job. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Here ends the reading. We continue with Psalm 23, read responsibly as printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Here ends the reading. You may be seated. I didn't know Alice, though I have certainly caught a glimpse of her life from the words here, and I know her in the life of her daughter Karen. I didn't know Alice, but I know Jesus. And I know that Jesus held Alice there at the end of her life. And I know that Jesus had Alice her whole life. And I know that his promises to her are eternal and that nothing can separate her from Christ. How do I know this? Because about 93 years ago, pastor poured some water on Alice's head and spoke a few words on behalf of Jesus. Words and water that made her a child of God and an inheritor of eternal life. And no, ma no matter what happened in her family, she always had Jesus. So we're not here today only to appreciate the life of this woman and to honor her memory. We are also here to honor God and to thank him for giving Alice to you, her family. And even more than that, we are here proclaiming the belief that the promises that God made to Alice in her baptism are promises that are simply forever. And from this we know that Alice was a child of God, bought with the price of Christ's blood and washed in the waters of new life. So I didn't know Alice, but I know Jesus. And I know that Alice knew Jesus. The cross that was traced on her forehead at baptism and again at confirmation sealed her forever as God's. And because of that cross, Christ has promised Alice a home with him, a dwelling place among the many mansions in the Father's house, a place that was prepared just for her. The same promises that God made to Alice are the same that he makes to you. You are mine. My name is on you. I've got you. Always. No hardship, no distress, no peril, nothing in life can separate you from God. Not grief, not pain, nothing takes us away from God. Not even our own unbelief, our doubts about God, as if God's promises to us somehow rest on our own understanding of them. God's life, his eternal life, is a gift. It's a gift to you. And at the last, not even death, can rip those promises away. Karen tells me that her mom always wanted to be good, to try to be a good person. Well, thanks be to God that we are made good through Jesus. Those who trust in him as the way and the truth and the life come to the Father, and their hearts are untroubled, and they have peace. Peace not from the world, but peace that comes from knowing Jesus. Jesus is in charge of Alice now. I didn't know her, but I know Jesus. And I know that Jesus knows Alice, and Jesus knows you. And nothing can take you away from the one who knows you and loves you. Not grief at the death of your beloved mother and grandmother and friend, not the separation of death, Nothing separates us from Jesus. You are his forever. And so the word for you today is let not your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Our God is stronger than death, stronger than anything in this life. Hold on to his promises in the face of grief, doubt, disbelief, the everyday trials and busyness of life, in the face of a truly awful year, full of upheaval and loss, 
cling to God despite all the evidence that death is the end, despite all the evil in our broken world, despite everything that we face and we see on the news, our God is stronger, and he will wipe away every tear from your eyes and make everything new, everything, including Alice, including me, including you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, because Jesus never lies. Amen.
Let us turn to God in prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord. prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with Alice and all those they love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us grace to entrust Alice to your never-failing love which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your service at servant Alice Betty. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb, of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Christ is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. That will conclude our services here at the funeral home. We're going to go to the cemetery and ask that you go to your cars. We will go in procession to the cemetery uh, in a few minutes when everybody's ready. So. Thank you. Thank you.